Today, let's discuss the very important topic that many players mess up on a regular basis. It is when should you defend your blinds when someone raises? And today, we're going to be discussing specifically big blind play. First, you have to understand that you are going to lose money in the big blind. And you're going to find that even the best players in the world lose money in the big blind. That's because you have to put in money without seeing your cards from out of position. It's not a good place to be in. But you're going to find that on average, the best players lose a small fraction of their big blind, whereas the worst players lose almost their entire big blind on average. And your goal here is to simply mitigate these losses. Because imagine if on average you pay little to no money from the blinds because you play really, really well, it's almost like you don't have to pay the blinds. And if you don't have to pay the blinds, well, your win rate is going to be fantastic because the, the small blind and the big blind are the two spots where you are going to lose money in No Limit Hold'em. Small stakes players usually make massive mistakes from the big blind. Many small stakes players fold way too often whenever someone raises. They think that they're just supposed to play good cards and very often they would be wrong. Other small stakes players think they're supposed to defend their big blind with any two cards. And they would also be very, very wrong. And if you can fix these leaks, you are going to increase your overall win rate by a lot. So let's discuss things that impact and affect how often you should defend your blind against a raise. First things first, the size of the raise you are facing is very, very important. As you're facing a smaller raise size, you should defend more often. Because think about it, imagine someone raises to two big blinds, they raise the minimum. If it folds around you in the big blind, you have to put in one big blind to try to win whatever's in the pot. That's going to be your opponent's raise, the small blind, your big blind, and if there's an ante in play, the ante as well. So you really don't have to realize all that much equity. But say someone raises to six big blinds before the flop, now you have to put in five big blinds more, which is a whole lot more than one, right? So you're going to find that whenever your opponent's raise small, you should defend quite often. But when they raise gigantic, you actually should be pretty tight. Also, the range that you're facing heavily affects your defending strategy. When you are facing a player who raises with a whole lot of hands, you should defend substantially wider. Like imagine it folds to the player on the button and you know they raise any two cards on the button when it folds to them. You should actually defend quite wide. But if you're facing a tight player from early position who raises, their range is quite strong and you actually should not defend very often at all. So as their range is wider, you should defend more often. As they're tighter, you should defend less often often. Also, your pot odds, which are heavily Im impacted by whether or not there is an ante in play. As you're getting better pot odds, because there's, because there's more money in the pot, you should defend with a wider range. So you're going to find that in cash games with no ante, you should defend tighter compared to a tournament with an ante. Also, you're going to find that very often in a cash game, rake is taken out of each pot, whereas in a tournament, it is not. So you may find that in a cash game, if someone raises to three big blinds and it folds around to you in the big blind, if you call, the pot will be six and a half big blinds, maybe minus one big blind for some big rake as a lot of cash games feature. So you're putting in two big blinds more to try to win 5.5 total. But in a tournament facing a three big blind raise, you call, if there's an ante in play, now you're putting in two to win seven and a half, right? So in a cash game, exact same scenario, someone raises three big blinds and it folds to you, you're putting in two to win five and a half, whereas in a tournament, you're putting in two to win seven and a half. So essentially, you're getting substantially better pot odds when there's an ante in play and there's no rake in the game. As the rake is lower, you should defend more. Also, two things your opponents probably don't consider, and you may not consider, is that as your stack that depth gets deeper, you should defend less often. And that's because you're going to drastically underrealize your equity. We'll discuss this point in a bit. And also, as you are more multi-way, you should also defend less often. These two points, stack depth and multi-way play, are something a lot of people mess up on a regular basis. So let's take a look at these two things in depth. Hi there, sharks. Sorry to so rudely interrupt this video, but I wanted to pause the video so that you could take a screenshot of this slide so that you have it to reference later. Remember, that if you keep all of these things in mind, you're going to be playing the big blind better than 99% of the players out there. And that is a whole lot of players. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, please do hit the like and subscribe button below to get lots more free poker coaching content. As you are deeper, you should defend less often. Here we have three charts. 60 big blinds, 
30 big blinds and 15 big blinds. Big blind versus a low jack raise. Low jack is under the gun, uh, six-handed, so middle position at a full table. 60 big blinds deep. You should re-raise with these hands in red, usually to about the size of the pot or a little bit more. So if your opponent raises, let's say, 2.2 big blinds and it folds around to you, you should re-raise to something like eight, let's say. With the hands in red, you're calling the hands in green and you're folding the hands in blue. With the 30 big blind chart, you're re-raising non-all in with the hands in light red and you're going all in with the hands in dark red, still calling green, folding blue. And 15 big blinds deep, you're shoving all in with the hands in red and calling the hands in green and folding blue. As you can see, the blue portion, the hands you're folding, make up a larger percentage of your entire range as you're deeper stacked, right? For example, we see jack six offsuit calls 15 big blinds deep, but it's an easy fold over here, 60 big blinds deep. And that's because you're going to under-realize your equity, which means say you do call a raise with jack six offsuit, 15 big blinds deep. If it comes jack seven three, and you only have 15 big blinds, you're happy just putting your money in with your top pair bad kicker. But 60 big blinds deep, if you check in your opponent bets, if you raise and get a whole lot of action, you don't actually love your hand, which is not good. But also, if you check and call, there's going to be a lot of runouts that are not good for your hand, right? Any overcard on the turn is going to be quite bad. Or say you have jack six and it comes um, seven, six, two. 15 big blinds, you're getting it in. 60 big blinds deep, not so much, right? So as you are shallower and shallower stacked, you actually get to defend your big blind more often because if you make anything decent, you can just pop your money in. One thing I also want to point out here is that a lot of people think you cannot call a raise when you're 15 big blinds deep. They think you have to go all in or fold. They've made the blunder of studying shove or fold charts only, but calling is an option. The reason calling is an option is because you're putting in one big blind or 1.2 big blinds, whatever it is, to try to win the pot that's going to be seven and a half big blinds or whatever it is, seven big blinds, six and a half big blinds. When you're putting in one to try to win four or five, six, seven big blinds, you get to stick around very, very wide. Because if you miss the flop, you just lose one big blind. And if you connect well enough with it, you're always happy getting it in and you're going to realize your equity very, very well. So as you are deeper stacked, you need to defend less often. And if we were facing a bigger raise size, you would defend even less often, primarily folding out even more of the offsuit hands. You're going to find the offsuit hands are the ones that fold the majority of the time, where suited hands very often do call and see the flop. Now let's discuss when you are multi-way. Here we're looking at some charts that may surprise you. 60 big blinds versus a cutoff raise. So that means cutoff raises, button folds, small blind folds. We are in the big blind. Here's what we should do. Re-raise small, well, re-raise non-all in with the hands in red, roughly the size of the pot. Call hands in green, fold hands in blue, same thing we saw earlier. But big blind versus a cutoff raise and a button call, now you're going to see re-raise non-all in with the hands in light red. You're supposed to shove it all in for 60 big blinds with the hands in dark red, and you're supposed to fold the hands in blue. And here we have big blind versus a cutoff raise, button call, and small blind call. And um, same story, re-raise, not all in with the hands in light red, all in with the hands in dark red, call green, full blue. So notice that as more players call before the flop, you should fold more of these primarily offsuit hands. A six should fold versus a cutoff raise, a button call, and a small blind call. A lot of people think, why would you ever fold there? You're getting amazing pot odds. Again, you are going to have gigantic reverse implied odds, and you're going to realize your equity very, very poorly. Also, as more people see the flop, all of these hands in this blue vicinity here are very likely to be dominated. Heads up, it's just way less likely you're dominated by one player. So heads up, you get to defend substantially wider, right? Something a lot of people mess up. They think as more people call, they should call even wider, but that is not true. Even though you're getting better pot odds, you're going to have gigantic reverse implied odds, meaning when you hit your hand with a hand like a six, let's say you make top pair, it's really, really likely you're beat. So you have to be very cautious. One thing I do want to point out here is that also when you are facing a raise and a call, this button call is going to be very weak. Usually it does not contain any of the best hands. Also, when you're in the big blind facing a cutoff raise and a button and small blind call, same story. Button and small blind usually are going to be very weak. And that allows you to make a big all-in. If you've studied my um, GTO charts at pokercoaching.com and in the poker coaching app, you know that 40 big blinds deep or so, when someone raises, there certainly are hands you want to be shoving with from out of position. 
usually a lot of the good, strong, big cards. Same story here, except for now the pot is bigger, but the collar is going to be very unprotected. And that allows you to rip it in with these hands in dark red. You may say, but you're not ripping it in with aces, kings, queens, and jacks. Doesn't that make your all-in kind of weak? Uh, not really. You're going to find that ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, tens, nines, these good, strong, big suited cards are very, very good hands to shove it all in. And I mean, tell you, I would tell you to take screenshots of these because this scenario comes up a lot. And as you get shallower and shallower, the all-in range just expands a little bit. But it's still a relatively similar strategy. So you're going to find 60 big blinds deep. You do need to start developing an all-in range against a raise and a call and a call because you're just going to realize your equity kind of poorly from out of position. Whereas when you shove it all in, it's very, very profitable. And the callers are going to be incredibly unprotected there. I mean, ask yourself. <laughs> Someone raises, you call playing 60 big blinds deep, big blind shoves all in, what are you calling with? You don't have aces, kings, queens, and ace, king, because you would have three bet the preflop. You really want to call it off for 60 big blinds with a hand like ace, queen? It's like, not really. <laughs> That's going to be one of the best hands in your range. You really want to call it off with nines or eights? Not really. So it's a scenario where the callers are going to be very, very dead, and that allows you to rip it all in with some hands. Okay? Let's discuss... Two main factors when three betting from the big blind. When you're deep stacked, you're going to find that you want to use a more linear three betting strategy. And a linear three betting strategy is a range comprised of your best hands that flop pretty well, your high equity hands. But when you're shallow stacked, you want to use a much more polarized strategy. And this is going to be a range comprised of your best hands for value and relatively weak hands that are not quite good enough to call with as a bluff without a whole lot of medium strength hands to three bet. And the reason for this is because when you are deeper stacked, your opponent is going to call in position a decent amount of the time because they're getting some pot odds or in position, they're going to realize your, their equity re relatively well. So you want to make sure your hand has good post slot playability. But when you are shallower stack, your opponent just can't call with their speculative hands because they're not getting very good implied odds. Let me give you an example here. Here we are, 100 big blinds deep, big blind versus a button raise, compared to 40 big blinds deep, big blind versus button raise. So 100 big blinds deep, we are three betting the hands in dark red to a little bit more than the size of the pot. 40 big blinds deep, we are three betting the hands in light red to a little bit more than the size of the pot, and we're shoving the hands in dark red. So let's take a look at the three betting range 100 big blinds deep. It's all the best hands, which are in both ranges, right? Tens and better, ace, ten suited and better, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, stuff like that. But then this is where the chart starts to differ substantially. Notice that the three bet bluffs, let's say, although they're not really bluffs, they're value bets to some extent, are going to be all of these strong suited hands and suited aces, 100 big blinds deep, plus just a few blocker bluffs with the ace, ace x and king x, right? So all the best hands and a whole lot of strong suited hands and suited connectors. 40 big blinds deep, though, look at where the bluffs come from. They come from 10 high, jack high, queen high, king high, and ace high. A whole lot of blocker nonsense hands with you calling all of the suited connected hands instead. And this is why it's important that you don't just follow one very static chart. A lot of people think, all right, in the big blind, I do this when someone raises. Ignoring stack death to some extent. And that is a gigantic blunder. Um, these charts, by the way, are in the Poker Coaching app. Make sure you check it out at pokercoaching.com. Get it on your phone. So anyway, to recap, things that should affect how often you defend your big blind, the raise size, the range you're facing, the pot odds you're getting, whether or not there's a rake involved, your stack depth, and if it is more and more multi-way. And again, big takeaways from here, as you are deeper stacked, you should defend less often. And as it is more multi-way, you should also defend less often, usually folding out a lot of the junky offsuit hands. That's me for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, type it out in the comment section. Maybe other people will learn from it as well. If you have any other thoughts or tips on a big blind play that may help out the other people here in the comment section, type that as well. If you like this, click the like and subscribe button below, right down there. It's easy. I would appreciate it. And also click the notification bell. We're putting out lots of fun YouTube videos for you, and I want to make sure you do not miss any of them. Good luck in your games. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.